Yo, what is up guys? Chillfeed here, back bringing you another Borderlands 3 video. Now, originally I was going to upload this build yesterday, but since Gearbox dropped a hotfix that included some fixes for Zane skills, I wanted to show off some gameplay with all the fixes that were applied. As a Zane main since day one, Zane holds a special place in my heart and I always kind of refuse the idea of him being weak or so bad that you can't even enjoy playing with him compared to the others. Even though I wouldn't mind some type of buff for Zane, knowing that he has a lot of problems with his builds, and also the build I will show you in this video, I still had more fun playing with him than any of the other World Hunters and I will try to explain why. Before I start with this video, I wanted to thank everyone for the crazy support I received from my last build video. I still can't believe that I'm now over 400 subscribers and the video has over 5000 views and it might not seem like a lot to you guys but man, everyone that watched, commented and liked the video just made my day and I wanted to thank every one of you who did that. If you enjoyed this one again, please leave a like on here and a comment down below which world hunter you want to see next do you agree with me or disagree and why i'm always open for constructive criticism or discussions in the comment section or on twitter if you follow me there at chillfeed gaming i will make a similar video for flag and most next so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those and with all that being said let's jump right into what i believe is the only build you really need for zane in the end game as i did with the amara build before i also tested a bunch of different builds for zane before i came to my conclusion that i I believe to get the most out of Zane for any situation is to equip the Sentinel and the Barrier action skill. And for anyone who already watched my Zane build video a couple of weeks ago, you can see that this is just a slight variation to that build. Let me explain why I think the Barrier is essential when playing with Zane before I go over why I choose the Sentinel over the clone. The Barrier combined with any type of prior weapon gives Zane the much needed survivability, over some stretches even invincibility. I played the Slaughter Shaft solo with Zane and only managed to go down once or twice doing the the whole time and that did not have anything to do with the build specifically but because Zane has no possibility in any shape or form to regenerate ammo with his skill tree. There are some anointed boosts that can give you some ammo regeneration but nobody should ever be forced to rely on that in my opinion. And to be fair in any other situation than when playing the slaughter shaft you are not running out of ammo as much since you have more ammo boxes after every encounter and more time to grab them. Another problem with this build is that you have to rely a little bit too much on certain types of weapons. For example, the best weapons in my opinion for this build are a Cryo Crossroad, a Fire Crossroad to deal with the Anointed, an Arctic Nighthawk and as an alternative to the Crossroad, and a Cryo Layuda because it's the Layuda and why not. For anything armored or some bosses that are resistant to Cryo damage, you can always use a Cutsman SMG to deal with them relatively quickly, so I found myself to not have any trouble with any bosses with this same build. As you can see, most of the effective weapons are SMGs or a sniper rifle that shreds through your ammo anyway. There aren't too many other cryo weapons that are good options in the assault rifle, pistol or shotgun department other than maybe a cryo laser exploder which is pretty good but unfortunately I don't have that anymore. So if you only have the crossroad SMGs and the cutsman SMG and the Layuda like I did you are going to have some trouble with ammo sometimes. You might be saying now but why are you saying this is the only build we need when you had so many issues? Because if you have all those things and use this build you can simply not be killed. You can freeze every enemy within a second when playing solo and when playing co-op your friends will love you and your barrier for freezing their targets while they can sit safe behind your barrier getting a damage boost and won't take any damage as long as it's active which can be forever most of the time. In order for this to work let me go over the four most essential things from the undercover skill tree. First up is the calm cool and collected skill. This skill resets your action skill cooldowns and duration immediately after freezing your enemies if your shields and health are full. How to freeze your enemies easily? Grab the skill Brain Freeze and you can almost instantly freeze them with critical hits, especially with the Crossroad, Nighthawk and or Laser Exploder. Now where it gets a little tricky with this tree is the combination with the Rough Rider Shield, which is another necessity. All you need to know about the Rough Rider Shield is that it does work with Calm, Cool and Collected in a way that your shield is always at 100% and you only need to worry about your health being full to reset your action skill cooldown or duration. Unfortunately the shield doesn't work combined with confident competence and for some reason it's not the most efficient for a rise to the occasion, which makes me believe that the Rough Rider shield right now almost counts as having no shield at all. You still want the health regeneration from rise to the occasion, even if it's not much, it still stacks with salvation and Donnybrook and you always want your health to be full. To help you with that, you want to equip the all-rounder action skill augment to cover you from all angles and basically never receive any damage except for elemental damage when you get hit by an exploding barrel or for some melee damage. You can counteract melee enemies with the other 
augment called Deterrence Field, where your barrier deals shock damage and staggers your enemy when touching it. So melee enemies are not a big problem either. This also works when picking up the barrier, even though your bonus gun damage is slightly decreased when shooting through your picked up barrier. And by the way, Gearbox, please, please, please fix the visibility when shooting through your barrier. You can sometimes not see anything, especially when these badass sea lots and their grenade launches get an increased splash radius, pinpoint accuracy and two projectiles per shot. Okay, back to the build. To sum it up, Rough Rider Shield and Calm Cool and Collected to have the highest chances of resetting your action skill cooldowns to have them up constantly, Brain Freeze for the easiest way to freeze your enemies and the all-rounder augment to not take any damage no matter what angle. If you get hit by a barrel sometimes or if you do manage to lose your barrier which can happen by the way you want as much damage reduction and elemental resistance as you can get therefore you want a stiff upper lip for plus 16 percent damage resistance to the last damage type you receive combined with the kill skill futility belt that makes all incoming damage non-elemental after each kill which will be active all the time but i'll come to that in a minute this gives you an additional damage reduction of plus 15 percent which would make around 31 percent in total the worst enemy in borderlands games can be the barrel sometimes and the additional element to take damage they deal to get rid of that 50% faster just back one point into a really expensive jacket which can work wonders sometimes the reason why your kill skills like futility belt will be up all day is the death follows close skill that you can get from the hitman skill tree this gives you a plus 25% kill skill bonus to make your damage reduction even more efficient just like all the other kill skills from the hitman tree you will get plus 25% movement speed from violent speed combined with plus 20% gun damage at just normal walk speed from violent momentum. As mentioned before, Salvation will get you 12.5% lifesteal when doing weapon damage to keep your health up and about 3% health regen of missing health per second with an additional 19% gun damage increase from Donny Brook in the doubled agent skill tree and even increased fire rate and the chance to fire an additional projectile coming from the skill boost of a class mode which is the executor class mode and in my case the lucky unsporting executor. I even got an increased SMG damage, reload speed, handling and action skill duration after after a kill with this class mode that boosts good misfortune but this is not needed with calm cool and collected and you can get class mods without that boost. The best thing about this class mod is that you can get a bunch of kill skill bonuses along with it meaning you get increased accuracy, handling, critical hit damage, status effect damage and chance after every kill and that should even be enhanced with death follows close but since there are no exact numbers to test this I'm not quite sure. The reason why I spent my last 10 points into synchronicity and Donnybrook instead of moving further down the hitman tree for the capstone seeing red that activates all kill skills immediately after activating any action skill is that you really need the extra gun damage of more than 35% because Zane doesn't have too much gun damage bonuses and can feel a little weak sometimes without them. You also don't really need seeing red most of the time. You obviously just need to kill one enemy to activate all the kill skills and then you have 15 seconds to kill another one which is not hard to do but really you can exchange the kill skills to the way you prefer them. This is just my version of how I think they work the best together. There are many reasons why I didn't choose the Digiclone and Double Agent Skill Tree more instead of the Hitman Tree and the Sentinel Drone. In my opinion, you don't get too much useful out of it other than grenade regeneration and more grenades thrown in general. I found it to be enough grenades when your Sentinel Drone is able to throw one every 15 seconds with drone delivery. The Cryo Nova Augment is in my opinion not better than the Winter's Drone and I just felt like it wasn't worth going down the whole tree to unlock a copy of your gun for your clone when the clone itself is killed too quickly or doesn't really do much anyway. I mean yeah the extra bonus gun damage is nice but you get just enough with the extra bonus from Death Carlos clothes for Donnybrook and synchronicity alone. I must admit that it is kind of fun to run around with crazy speed from supersonic man combined with violent speed but you have to slow down anyway most of the time to shoot your enemies because you are way too fast to control your aim and you even get some increased movement speed from the bad dose augment for the drone as well. Or I don't know, maybe I just suck with the Digi Clone, or maybe I just didn't like the playstyle of relying on switching with your clone for some boost, and maybe it works just fine for everybody else. I'm not saying it is bad, but I just felt that it is not better than what I was using after testing everything out. Before I end this video now, just a quick overview on what gear I was using. Like I said, a Cryo Crossroad SMG or an Arctic Nighthawken are the way to go for freezing, a Fire Crossroad for the Anointed, and they are not that much of a problem 
problem anymore, as you can tell from the footage sometimes. A cryo laser exploder is also great for when you should run out of ammo, with SMGs, and a cryo layuda never hurts, and of course a cutsman when fighting against larger unfreezable bosses. An executor class mod for more kill skills, any artifact that boosts damage against frozen enemies, and either the whispering eyes or any of the hex grenades for some extra cryo damage. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that even though most people say that Zane is a bad character and that he is missing some synergy with his skills, I think that most people just think that he is bad because the other characters have some type of playstyle of which many say it is OP. I actually enjoyed Zane's playstyle the most. Freezing every enemy with one mouse click or one trigger pull is just super satisfying and quite OP for mobbing as well if you will. The barrier can make him pretty much invincible in almost every situation and even though it can be fun sometimes to kill these big bosses within 2 seconds or something, I actually enjoy the game more when I have somewhat of a challenge to kill bosses. But that's just me, let me know down in the comment section if you agreed with me, leave a like if you found this video helpful and maybe let me know if you want Flex or Moses build next, subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and thank everyone for watching, I see you in my next video.